Hello everyone, you might remember this truck from a video I made previously of a battery light coming on at times. And that's when I replace this uh, circuit. It's a yellow wire here that goes from the alternator to the PCM. And that fixed our battery light concern. But now we have a different problem. Now the batteries are not staying charged. Even though the alternator is working fine, the truck is charging the batteries when the engine is on. After the truck sits overnight, the batteries are dead the next morning. This was, a, this was an in-depth diagnostic elimination procedure. It took me a couple hours to finally get to this point, but I finally figured it out. So as usual, when I come across something like this, I like to share it with people and hopefully it saves them some time and money. So what I did, let's start off from the beginning here, is a parasitic drain test. This involves in a, a diesel, is a little bit different than a gas. A diesel vehicle, usually you have two batteries like this on a truck. Um, you leave the positive connected, disconnect the negative on the first battery. Come over to the second battery here, leave the positive connected, disconnect the negative on the second battery. And what you do is you put an amp meter in series between the negative battery cable here and the negative battery post. You can just see I've got a little alligator lead clamped on there with a vice grip. And then the alligator clip going to the, um, the uh, cable clamp here, the negative battery terminal cable. And then that runs down to my DVOM. I started from the top and I eliminated components one at a time, and I eventually found that the uh, that the 125 amp mega fuse uh, next to the battery here on the passenger side was where my drain was originating from. If I disconnected that, the parasitic drain went away. On modern vehicles, you shouldn't have any more than 50 to 85 milliamps of draw. Uh, the spec on this vehicle is no more than 50 milliamps. When the drain is completely gone, it goes down to about 10 milliamps of drain. And I'll show you that later on in the video here. But I found that when I disconnected this cable, the drain went away. So I looked up wiring schematics and found that this cable goes to the BCM. The BCM on this vehicle is located right here. Here's the passenger side of the vehicle, passenger door. The body control module is right here and it has a bunch of fuses attached to it. Initially, uh, this aftermarket splitter here caught my attention, but that turned out to not be our source of parasitic drain. So I started pulling fuses one at a time while monitoring the parasitic drain here. It's showing 160 milliamps right now. Uh, that's because I recently figured out where my drain was from and I plugged a few things back in. So there's a few modules that need to go to sleep yet. Ford tells you it'll take up to 40 minutes for all the modules to go to sleep. But I did finally figure out where the parasitic draw was at. I finally narrowed down the draw to fuse number 29 here. I believe that's fuse 29 um, on the body control module. Uh, yep, we got fuse 29 here, 20 amp. This goes to your audio control module or your accessory protocol interface modules, depending on what configuration uh, of entertainment system you have in the vehicle. So I disconnected the radio. That didn't fix it. The drain was still there. And I tried the next one, which was the accessory protocol uh, interface module, which is behind the glove box here. It's this little black box right here. If you look at it from this side, it's right behind this fuel shutoff switch. It's this module right here, this thing. So there's two seven millimeter bolts or screws that hold that in place. And there's two connectors on this particular truck. One is for the USB right here. And the other one is the main connector for the APIM or the accessory protocol interface module. I'll just take it out here so it's easier for you to see. There's a connector right there on this module. Now, the interesting thing about this truck, uh, the dead giveaway that it had a parasitic drain was, for whatever reason, this left middle clearance lamp here, or marker light, would be on dimly. And what I noticed was, 
when I unplugged or when I removed this fuse or when I unplugged the APIM here, that light went out. Now, watch the amp meter as I plug this connector back in. See it jump up? Now we're at 1.1, 1.2 amps. That's a pretty good drain. That'll drain a battery overnight in no time. We'll come back here to the back side of the truck. And as you can see, turn my light off here. Yep. See how that light is on dimly? Oh, that's disgusting. Dripping nasty water there. For I don't know why the others aren't on, but this one is on for some reason. Now, let's go back here. And don't worry, I've already done the 40 minute wait time to see if that drain goes away. It doesn't. Let's go back to the APIM here. We're going to disconnect the connector. Now watch what happens to the amp meter. Man, there we go. When I disconnect this connector. See it starting to drop? There it goes. And eventually that'll drop all the way down to 10 milliamps if you wait about 40 minutes or so for all the modules to go to sleep. But the dead giveaway that that was my problem was when I came back here and noticed the light is no longer on. So, I removed the APIM from the truck, and what do you know, we've got some corrosion on the, uh, on the terminals there. And I've seen a lot of these Fords where if you have just the slightest bit of corrosion on that terminal, like you can see there, that is a pretty good sign that you've got water in the module. And these modules do not like water. As you can see, there's just circuit board. There's a circuit board in there, and if that gets wet or corrodes, that can cause all kinds of weird issues. So I looked on the connector as well, and sure enough, we got a little bit of corrosion on that connector. See that bottom pin there? And what do you know? Sure enough, the number one pin, the number one terminal on this connector here is fuse number 29. The fuse down here on the body control module that if I remove, the draw goes away. So, that turned out to be the problem. I don't know how the moisture got in there, but if you look at this truck, you can see rust down here as if moisture's getting back in here somehow. And the other thing too is if you look around, like you look in the door here, you see all this dirt and debris and, and stuff, there's stuff in the door here. Look down here as well. I pulled this up because sometimes you'll find corroded wires or shorted wires in this area here because moisture settles here. It's just a whole bunch of dirt and debris. Then you look inside the vent, the uh, heating and air conditioning vent here. You see a lot of just nastiness in there. And it makes me wonder if, you know, perhaps, the window was being left open and maybe we got water in there or something, who knows. I didn't see any water around the BCM, but it's definitely a little rusty here and there's a lot of debris in these vents. So it makes me wonder if maybe they were leaving the window down and that corroded. Water got in there and corroded it and that caused our parasitic drain. So. That turned out to be the issue. Anyway, I'm going to get a part ordered for this, but I thought I'd put this out here for you guys. Hopefully it helps. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up, and I'll see you next time.